Roseville Township Public Services Commission. I'd like to call the meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We're going to call roll now, and we do have a couple of members, uh, at least at this point, missing. Lenny Podestris is missing this evening, as well as uh, John Riley, and he may be here uh, a little later, and Ted Van Oz. But we do have a quorum. So with that, uh, Kennedy? Here. Schmidtke? Present. Claudier? Here. Uh, Budney? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, so the next uh, item is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda? If not, we'll move I on. Would, I'd make a motion to approve the agenda. I will second that. Order <laughs> that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved as distributed. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have approval of bills. Um, there's uh, uh, five pages of bills that we had a chance to look over. Are there any questions on the bills? If not, I'd entertain a motion for approval. Motion to approve the bills, vouchers 13836 through 13849. Is there support? Support. Moving supported that the bills as distributed be approved. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Bills are approved. Next we have a statements of revenues and expenditures uh, for the fiscal year. And um, are there any questions on those? And this is the last um, monthly report for the year, the fiscal year. But with water and sewer billings, we're always a little bit of a quarter behind. So at any rate, um, I looked it over. I didn't notice anything. So unless there's any questions, we'll receive and file it. No questions. Okay, move on to the treasurer's report for March of 2019. If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report. So moved. Support. Supported treasurer's report for March 2019 be approved as distributed. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. There is public here, and we are we are blessed this evening. Our commission, DPS commission, uh, besides uh, our engineers and uh, director at the wastewater plant, we have our fire chief, Duncan Murdoch. Would you like to speak? Time to speak. I, I thought maybe you were here to talk about the, how smoothly the West River Road water main project went. Actually, that did go smooth. Absolutely, flawlessly perfect. So no problems. They were uh, very uh, receptive to, to rescue and fire. So absolutely no problem. Very, very nice Good. company to work with. So very happy. But the reason I'm here tonight, I'm here on behalf of West Shore Estates. Uh, I am the and I think I'm in my 12th year as president of that association. Uh, I don't know if you know where West Shore Estates is. It's between Meridian and West River, left-hand side, the old uh, Off Coolside Ferry property. Road. Yeah. Um, as you well know, uh, that sub was built during the era when concrete was failing all over Grozeal. Uh The association has asked me to come to the, the DPS to talk about the possibility of partnering up on doing that uh, seam repair like John's had done here on the island where they cut out, I don't know, 18 inches? Yeah. And they replace it. Um, we're working hard as an association to uh, gather funds. Uh, we're, we're thinking we're over 60% of uh, the residents that live in that sub, including landowners, that are willing to look at the possibility of repairing our sub. Uh, I did have um, Charlie Campo out. We discussed it, walked the sub. There's a few sad slabs that need to be replaced, but for the most part, we can get through and, and open up the seams and replace them. Uh, we were up in the, the $175,000 mark up in that area to, to, to replace. Uh, I know the sub is, is looking at it seriously on how they're going to fund it. Uh, probably special assessment to each one of the landowners that live in the sub. I think there's about 70 or 72 homes. But the reason I'm here, I'm here on behalf of the sub to talk about the possibility of 
help helping the, or the township helping us fund the project. I know funds are limited coming back from the state to the county down to us due to the fact that we don't have a lot of uh, traffic on our local roads, but uh, I think we can make some monies go a whole lot further if we partner up in some way, shape, or form, percentage, whatever it might be, matching funds, percentages, whatever we might be able to come up with. I know this is a long, drawn-out process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but uh, I would definitely like to sit down with this commission and, and possibly do a walk through our sub and and talk about it. It is it is disintegrating quickly. It looks like Cadillac Circle. It's, I don't know if you've walked Cadillac Circle. It's really headed that way, and it's this winter really did it in. So I got potholes. Yeah, we in still we still remember LaSalle Court. So uh, yeah, and that's yeah, the way that's that sub's yeah. headed. That's the way Cadillac's headed. The Cadillac, where my parents live, that's also an association too. So, um, but we're here willing to. I know the road millage failed, but we're here willing to talk to the the DPS commission and that and the possibilities of getting the roads fixed in that sub. So. Was that 175 to do them all? Was that your complete job? It was between, when he when he finally got done with it, because it was just a rough estimate. We ran through right, it, right? Right. But uh, it was right between 175 and about two and a quarter to do everything to get everything done. Put the sub back in order. So, right. And the and the residents in there are they're hot to to get it repaired. So we, we have an association meeting coming that up. That was the seams, doing the seams for the 175. Yeah, yeah, this group here did replace a couple of two or three or four slabs in that sub that were completely gone. But uh, the last two winters have just tore it up. And the county's been good about coming in. lorenda has got on the horn to them. We filled them with uh, asphalt, but you know how that stays. You know, after this winter, we got some nice holes. But uh, I would like to sit down with whoever it might be. John Lorenda, the board itself, or whoever you might think is uh, pertinent in helping me out with this project and, and see if we could maybe come to some type of agreement. Certainly we can work with you on it, number one. Um, <clears throat> we always try to work with the neighborhood groups. Um, I've, I've got to go look at it. Um, That's fine. I'm not sure I looked at the right streets. I went out when Lorinda a few months ago uh, uh, told me you might be coming to approach us. Um, <clears throat> I think I was on the wrong streets because what I saw wasn't anywhere like LaSalle Court. But I would say this to you. Are you talking about this summer? No. No. Because we um, got a grant from uh, Wayne County for local streets, neighborhood streets. And uh, we have pledged all our money. No, no, I, and I actually told the association that, that those monies have already been, you know, allocated out. But we're, you know, they might even be willing to start doing some of the repair already. But, uh, you know, if we can maybe come to get some help, you know, maybe the following year we can take a serious look at that. You know, if we, if we spend $30,000 and get $30,000, we can get a lot done. So the money goes further. So if, if the community partners up with the, the township. Talking, have those roads been deeded over to the county? Yes. Yep. Yep. Thank God. <laughs> so. No, I'm willing to take a look at it. Yeah, whenever, you, whenever you're interested in, in doing a walkthrough, uh, feel free to give me a call. I can always break away from uh, sure. the office. And no, yeah. no, every year. Two trustees here. No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Most every year our commission... We didn't do it, well, let's see, now it's already spring again. So every spring, generally, we get in our vehicles and we, together, we before a meeting, uh, we drive the roads with uh, either Lorinda or John. We figure out a tour and look at the worst problems we have to uh, look at how we can budget our funds to be most Absolutely. Important. Look at storm drains as well. So we haven't done that this spring. And um, this summer, we're certainly going to have to do that. Go look at some project areas. So I think it's, I haven't had it on my radar to set up a date for that. <coughs> but I think in the next 90 days, we should do that. And we will let you know when we're going to do it. And uh, specifically, maybe John uh, or I can meet with you and look at the road specifically, the ones you're talking about. And when we do our tour, then we can come back and discuss them. Now, I can be truthfully honest with you. There are streets on Grosse Isle, like my parents' street, that's a whole lot worse than ours. 
it's definitely in worse shape. But uh, we're definitely willing to look at help funding it and get it, getting it ours repaired. So, the only other comment I have, and I don't know, I probably ought to um, uh, step here to talk about it. But in my career, which was city government uh, years ago, uh, if a neighborhood came to us and said they would like to initiate a, a special assessment on their own, one way the township can always help. Uh, I know that Hawthorne had a special assessment for some of its streets, but it was a two-year period. Um, um, but if you're talking that kind of money that you're talking about, uh, we used to take on, a, let's call it a private special assessment, but maybe use the township's ability to spread it over five, six, seven years make the payment softer on people. And uh, it would be like an in-house special assessment. No bonds would be issued. The township would just loan its, its funds out and it would all be paid back with uh, uh, following the special assessment law with some interest rate on it. Um, so at any rate, that's an idea too. And that's what we'll do. We'll do a special assess yeah. assessment within the sub. Yeah, we, uh, we did that uh, on Oak River. There was, that's a special assessment. So those are some possibilities. Okay, I appreciate Murdoch. it. Murdoch? Yep, and, uh, thank you. Anything else? Nope, I'm good, thank you. Certainly can, sir. Just please come to the podium. We always enjoy your company. Hi, John. Myself is Jim Nelson, 2790 Rio. Uh, so Ohio here, he has seen the circle when you get down real far enough. It's really, really bad, bad, bad. It is on your list of 25 projects. I haven't talked to the 32 homeowners. I don't know if they would want to participate or not. I would hope they would. But I'd like to get it uh, appraised as to what it's going to cost us uh, to do it. And... We're going to have to do it oh, soon. It's on our list yeah. to, to do this summer. Yeah. It's part of that program. Did you know that? Okay, but so there's 400 and some thousand dollars. Yes. That's in that budget. I didn't know if all, I asked you if those were prioritized and you said no. no. You said, you, no, you said yours wasn't on there. It's on there. Oh, yeah, on that, the, those are all, I mean, they're, they're all on there to get done. Hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, I asked you that outside, Jim. Well, I'm on the face of the earth, apparently. You're here because you love coming to this commission yeah. meeting. This came to be a, you know, fly on the Phil, wall. We, Phil, we, uh, <laughs> we specifically looked at Rio. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, There's three of us took, did the tour. And concerned underneath the pavement that there is water under there, and that's why it's breaking up. But well, that that would all be looked at, I mean. Well, how long has it been there? 20 years? Forever. Yeah, more than years? that. I've been here 20 years, so it's probably 40 years. Oh, yeah, I mean, we know that pavement's first part out. of the road that comes in is, is okay. It's just when you get to the circle, it really understand. It's in the project. Then when private property starts, they did that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Comments. And for the record, Mr. Riley has now joined us. Welcome, John. Good evening. Okay, moving on. Um, there are no action items tonight, and like to go through the manager's report. Uh, what we're going to do is probably hold, uh, Ryan, we'll haul off on your report because you and Sahal are going to talk about the wastewater treatment plant uh, a little later on the agenda, okay? Uh, Lorinda, you want to pick it up from Yard Waste? Yep. Yard Waste, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Yard Waste began on April the 1st. I've received a lot of phone calls asking when it started. Um, just to let the residents know that it'll run until December the 13th, which is a Friday this year, December the 13th. And I ask that everybody review the guidelines. They're posted on our website, please. There are certain materials that they can't take in yard waste. They won't re uh, take anything over four foot in length or four inches in diameter. No stumps, no shrubs with root balls and dirt or any large quantities of dirt or sand, gravel, that type of stuff. And also, please do not put them in plastic bags because they will not pick them up. The next item I have is that the Riverview uh, Land Preserve will be having a community shred day on Saturday, April the 13th, which is this Saturday, <clears throat> from 
noon until 4 p.m. There's a limit of three boxes per residential household. Uh, they'll do this no, no matter what, rain or shine. You can leave your rubber bands, paper clips, and staples on it, um, but they ask that you don't uh, put any binders in there. So it's a free drive through event, and it's a perfect opportunity to shred any type of confidential paper you have, um, materials such as receipts or bank statements, medical records, or tax documents. So all the documents will be securely sh shredded on site, and then the paper will be recycled. Next one is from our Open Space Greenways Committee. They are going to be having a Dump the Junk, Find a Treasure on Saturday, May 11th from 9 until 4, located down at the DPW yard. They'll have dumpsters available for you to dispose of items that cannot be picked up through the normal curbside program. Also on that same day, Wayne County will be hosting their Household Hazardous Waste Collection from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Henry Ford College out in Dearborn at 5101 Evergreen Road. That is a very well-organized event. I've participated in that several times myself. And what we can't take, they can take out there. If so if you, I get lots of calls about paint, um, light bulbs, things like that, uh, fire extinguishers, smoke detectors. They'll take all of that stuff at the Wayne County um, event. The only thing is you need to get there early because the lines are very long, but they do move. And you just stay in your vehicle, and they'll unload everything for you. Next item I have is from um, our annual re reconciliation with our agreement with Riverview regarding how much um, uh, refuse we take over to the uh, landfill. Last year, from the time period of March 1st through February 28th of this year, we delivered 4,184.66 tons of residential waste during that time period. So based upon our contract, they'll give us... Um, our initial rate is $18.52 a ton, and they're going to give us a 3% credit, which is $0.56 cents a ton. So we will be getting a credit of $2,343.41. So that's really that's good, because the year before we didn't get anything. And that's all I have. I thought you were going to say they're going to bring the garbage back. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's a quick update. Thank you very yes, much. You're welcome. Uh, so... Uh, the next item on our agenda, we're going to have a discussion about our wastewater treatment plant and our sanitary sewer system. We have with us uh, this evening uh, Director of our Wastewater Treatment Plant Operations, Ryan Walsh. Ryan, and, and Kyle Sabak, our Township Engineer. So I think, gentlemen, the first thing I'd like you to do is go through the, the, three, the, the three projects. And uh, the third project I'm including as the sludge. Ryan, if you and so I'd like to give an update on where we are with the elevators, the, um, the Duperon project, and and um, then you mentioned the the hauling of the sludge with waste management. If you'd like to cover those three items and the, between the two of you, that'd be good. <clears throat> on the um, elevator, on April fourth, we talked to the contractor. He hasn't yet received the fan that's going to be installed in the shaft. He already has a mason and his staff aligned. As soon as the fan shows up, he's going to move in right away and install it. So that's all what's holding it up at this point is the receipt of the equipment to install. And uh, he realizes that this is a very uh, uh, critical part of uh, uh, improvement at the plant because, again, the elevator shut down now. They can't use it till this uh, equipment is installed. Uh, he's a uh, contractor that's local to the township. He does lots of maintenance at uh, Township Hall. So uh, he promised as soon as he gets the equipment to move in. The second item is a bar screens project that's at the plant. Uh, DEQ came up a couple months ago with 13 items uh, of information that they required from the township. And that's pretty much similar to what they required from Trenton because Trenton in 2017 installed the same type of equipment but on a larger scale because their plant is larger. We answered all 13 items. Last week he came up with a number 14 to us and that has to do with the ventilation system now where we're putting the deparent screens. There is a vent that comes down to change the air in the wet well. That's in the way we uh, re requested a part of the scope of the project to get it relocated now 
DEQ is requesting to justify the air changes. If we're going to put bends in and change the size of it, they want to know how many air changes we have, and we have to meet the 10-state standard. We're looking, we're looking into that. I hope that's the only item that's holding the permit up. And uh, after that, we'll go out for bids and get some prices and get it moving. It's a very uh, involved project. Uh, we have to do a retrofitting of the wet well area by cutting floors, filling concrete up. It's not as simple as we thought it's going to be just because of the confinement of the area. Uh, these screens technically are supposed to be at an angle, but because we are limited space-wise and DEQ is requiring uh, always to have access all around them, we have to pretty much put them almost vertical, and do parents are comfortable that they work for them in that uh, setup. So we're hoping that DEQ will approve uh, what we give them and we'll get a permit going, and we'll go out for bids right after that. That's the stats as far as the projects is planned. So, <clears throat> and in the memo you record, it was, uh, sent out to, uh, I think all of us, you mentioned uh, your discussion with, with waste management for the sludge hauling. Yes, right now the contract um, it has been revised by the the township, and we've sent it on to waste management. Um, and what's we get that and we sign it then we can schedule them um and we're hoping on in june is when we'll schedule it same as last year so, so this is something you do twice a year once a year actually this is only once a year yeah so it's moving along at a nice pace all the the details on the the loading and the trucks uh, that's all been worked out with waste management yes and it's going to be the same as last year yep yeah yep. because of the bridge problems and the weight restrictions was a about a thirty thousand dollar increase in our sledge hauling cost there goes the money for the roads uh, right there <laughs> um, <clears throat> Put the sludge on your roads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would like to ask, before we get into the next item, on the bar screens, a question I have, and we'll open it up to other questions. So you have this 14th item, which the MDEQ, the state, has asked for um, a response on. Once that's accepted by them, then this Part 41 is just a section of the federal law that they will issue a permit. That's correct. And... Um, when do you expect that? I mean, reasonably in June, maybe. And when would we go out for bids? If we get an answer from, uh, let's say, mid-May, we can go out uh, for bids beginning of June. We'll allow, because of the complexity of the project, about a month to bid. So that's July. Then by the time we get bids in and we award, that's mid-August. Uh, so we're looking at end of August before we can start anything. That's pending equipment being available to if there is a lead time on the equipment we have to wait for that so um, well, this project started several months ago and uh, maybe six months ago or more or more yeah uh, I know it's something that the prior manager Joe Keefe had in mind to do um, but it's got a lot more complicated than yeah it, it's been years in the making here so yep other other questions from any of the wastewater items from anybody? Just on uh, on uh, MD with MDQ Sahil, uh, uh, is it because we changed something that they came up with fourteen, or did that just pop up? Oh, no, it just popped up. He realized that we had it already called on our permit that we'll be relocating this vent, and we knew all along that this vent needs to be moved. It's right that smack in the way of the, one of the screens. He must have caught on to it and came back and. Want to confirm that the air changes meet 10 state standards, and we can prove that to okay. him. Okay. And I'm hoping that's the last of the items because we satisfied everything else he requested. So, um, then. this just the bar screen, uh, it's going to go in the wet well, right? And how deep is that? 40 feet below ground surface? Yes. Yep. But they're not going 40 feet deep. They're going to go to the floor below the first floor. Yeah. And then we'll have a washer and a compactor there, and that will convey all the debris outside. I understand. To the first. Yep. It's, 
It's an involved project. It's not as simple as we, we like it to be. So, work is in a shaft that is our wet well, and there's a staircase going down there right now, and it's 40 feet. The deep. challenge is. We've all been down it. Yeah. We've yeah. all had the privilege of walking in it. The challenge is going to be getting the equipment down. They have to assemble it piece by piece. It cannot be moved as one unit to be placed on it. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Ryan? Nothing else for me. Hey, so. Um, I guess so. so Hiles got the floor, uh, and you're going to talk about the uh, asset management program, the state. I'm going to be brief because this item is very involved and I didn't very hear that. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be very brief. So <laughs> we like to get out here in less than two. Just kidding. <clears throat> Just a brief background. Um, on April 18th, the township authorized us to uh, prepare a plan to do the plan for the asset management program for the sanitary sewer system. If you recall, we had a study session in the room next door, and we discussed the requirements to provide asset management programs for both the water system and the sanitary system. And uh, we realized that's something that we cannot escape from, so we got authorization through the commission to proceed with that. So we, we started working on the plan to do the plan, and by August 25th, we made a submittal to the EQ of 2017, August 25, 2017. On March 11, 2019, we received the response from the EQ. And then the response, they're requiring some information and clarifications. It has to do with staffing levels. They wanted staffing level summary for both the collection system and the wastewater treatment plant to prove that we have enough staff to maintain and operate and perform maintenance, what have you. They wanted to update the DPS organization chart. They want to know who's in charge, who's second in command, who the staff are. Um, they want an updated uh, process flow diagram at the plant to prove how the flows go through, including the dechlorination process. And uh, they want an actual 2018-2019 now actual expenditure summary for both the collection system and the wastewater treatment plant. And these are, not, I mean, these are uh, items that are available, but it's, it's going to take some time to get them ready and submit to them. And they also want to see a 2019-2020 uh, budget and the rate schedule. Uh, all of these tie into the asset management program. They want to make sure that if we prepare an asset management full pledge with all the elements that are uh, involved in it, we have enough budget to cover all of the expenses and we have rates that are high enough to supplement the funding form. The other items requested uh, that are already in the plan we submitted to them is a system inventory of all the assets on both the sanitary collection system and the wastewater treatment plant. They want to know every pipe by size, by age, by length. They want to know every manhole by depth, by rim, by type of material. And they want to know every pump station by pump, by depth, by force main, by electrical panel, and so forth. All of these are required. These are called uh, vertical assets. They also want to know about the plant, every element, every asset in the plant. And we're not talking about just the minor bolts and screws, like a pump, a fan, a ventilation system, an elevator, per se. All of these are assets at the plant. They want to know. Uh, what they are as far as an inventory. In addition to that, they want to know their uh, condition. They want condition assessment. They want to know if this pump is 10 years old, is it in good condition, is it uh, ready to fall apart, is it uh, going to survive 10 more years? And with that, they want to have a criticality. What they call a criticality is how critical is that pump? If that pump fails, is the operation going to cease or is it a redundant pump that if it fails, there's another one that's going to take its place. And all of these gets, uh, get assigned numbers, uh, uh, assessment numbers as far as condition and a criticality. The both numbers will get multiplied together to, to come up with what you call a, uh, a business risk evaluation. Now, that's what DEQ base their review of the criteria of the replacement or survivability or longevity of this equipment on. The higher the number, the more critical it is. Therefore, the higher priority should be for replacement, for uh, improvement. Um, 
all of these items are similar to what all communities went to when they got this um, asset management plan grant to do. So we're um, pretty much in the same line of study. We're doing everything to evaluate and come up with condition, come up with the criticality, come up with the business risk evaluation form. Based on that, based on these numbers, we can then put together what we call capital improvement plan for every asset, whether it's a pipe, whether it's a manhole, whether it's a pump station, whether it's a plant element. It could be a pump at the plant, it could be the screens, it could be uh, the elevator, it could be anything at the plant that's critical to the operation of the system. Um, now, <clears throat> they requested that we respond by May 2nd. We cannot respond by May 2nd. First of all, we need to prepare the answers. Second, we need to present them to you again. Your next meeting is by May 14th. So we did call them and we told them that they will not see an answer till after May 14th and after the commission looks at it and you have, after you bless it for uh, conformity and for budgeting purposes. So um, again, without your support, the submittal is, gonna, is not gonna happen. Uh, we are currently working with the township staff, with our consultants, to get this uh, asset management um, answer and or report done and presented to the DEQ. Um, I like while I'm here to, cons uh, to request consideration for a GIS plan. Uh, I know, Bill, I don't know if you want to talk about GIS or should I briefly mention what, what we're looking at? Okay. Um, the township doesn't have a GIS program plan in place. Um, we don't have it for a sanitary, we don't have it for a water system or a storm system. It is a good uh, option to have. It is very beneficial that now that we're preparing all of this information to put together in a database, we had to just put it in an Excel form and supply it to DEQ, then come back every time we improve something, fill up an Excel form which is antiquated without having the benefit of having a platform that is upgradable, updatable, that the field guys can use on computers in the field, that you can look at from your computer and find out what's been improved, what do you have as far as water mains, what do you have as far as sanitary sewers. Um, it's a good platform to have. Lots of communities are having it and they're loving it. Actually, yesterday I made a presentation in a review about their street sectioning program. We brought it up on the screen, showed them every patch, what we did two years ago, what we did last year, what we did this year, all of it at their fingerprints on their iPads. They could see it on a GIS map. So it's a very beneficial tool to have. I strongly recommend that the township consider having a GIS platform in place. Uh, we're looking at a, to set up the base map and import the utilities, the water mains and the sanitary system at something between um, 135 dollars to $145,000. That includes the software that the township could use. Now, when it comes to locating manholes, this could be done by uh, John or his staff to go with uh, GPS units and set up on the manhole, get up the coordinates, and bring it back, put it on the system. So. Um, it gives them a good background to use. It's a good platform, uh, very easy to upgrade, and uh, very easy to access for everybody um, at the township to see. And um, anytime you videotape a sewer, you can link that videotape to that sewer length on the, on the map. So you click on that pipe on the map, you can see the video, you can see the pictures, you can see the diameter, you can see the age it was put in, you can see the condition of it. All of that is at your fingertip instead of having to open up old maps and not see them, you can zoom in and see it up close on the computer. Uh, just, it'll do without having to use any more paper prints and charts and Excel forms and so forth. So that's something I highly recommend. Um, after I've seen it uh, being used in uh, different communities, I, I think it's a- uh, Which one? Riverview, Flat Rock, Gibraltar, uh, Allen Park, Trenton are going into it now. They're, they're finishing their plan now. So uh, if you'd like to talk to their engineer, Bill Hogan, you can ask him. And uh, uh, you can talk to Riverview staff. You can talk to Gibraltar staff. You can talk to Allen Park, Flat Rock. That's the thing that most it's, it's utility, utility systems are, are going yeah. to. And if you like samples, we can bring, we can 
Uh, we'll be more than happy to bring you over, have you uh, see a presentation on it. How did we talk about this before, or you know, sometime in the past? Yeah, it seems, yeah, it yeah. seems like yeah. we, uh, yeah. yeah. Again, it's it's our recommendation, and um, uh, we like to see it happening because we we had to see Grossil behind times as far as record keeping and so forth. So that's all I have. Uh, if you have any questions on either one, the uh, asset management or sure. let's uh, open it up for questions then from the commission. Um, <clears throat> one thing I want to clarify, John, we're involved in the uh, TV of the, all the sewers on the island. And you're collecting data not only on each pipe segment. Is the data being collected that could yes. be put into GIS? Yes. Currently, the field staff is doing manhole inspections, but having spoken to Sahara recently, as part of the asset management plan, you need GIS coordinates on every manhole. So we really need to move forward with that if we're going to follow the asset management plan. So we need to. Um, I'm sorry, GPS coordinates, yes, location by GPS. Sorry, yeah, GPS coordinates. coordinates into the GIS system. The only other question I have, and we'll open it up, is <clears throat> I know that the township board entered into an ACO. I don't know if it's finalized yet. That's an administrative concern. No, it's, it's, it's in place and it's still uh, ongoing. Actually, it will not, it will not retire till we prove that we took care of the system as far as bypasses and so forth so part of the ACO as I remember was not only to do the TV of the sewer lines but to do an asset management that's plan. correct it is uh, it Required. is a critical element um, it is highlighted on my copy of the permit so we've, we've gone through it through the when we did the study session we went through it as far as the uh, requirement by the DQ to perform we'll open it up to questions uh, are there any questions Right. <laughs> so before you leave, so are you going to come, based on your presentation, are you going to come back to the commission with We'd something? We'd like to come back to the commission on the 14th to present you with the commitment and the answers to the EQ. We don't want to just go ahead and overcommit the township or undercommit the township. We like to meet the requirements, but there are always financial elements to everything we commit to, and uh, we got to be careful. Like, for example... I don't want to get into it too much, but we already looked at instead of the two years they're requiring, we're stretching this over four years. And the reason is finances. I know in 2023, 2024, we start retiring some of the bonds, so that frees up some money. We don't want to tell them that we can do it by 2021, because that's going to commit to lots of funding that we don't have. Whether they approve it or not, we don't know, but I think we're going to push our luck, because we already pushed with the ACO amendment and I'm hoping they'll have an open mind the same way to consider extending it for four years. Uh, I know they're going to push back, and we're going to push back. So we see who wins. So we'll see what happens. Well, you know, aside from the, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Lorinda or Usile, aside from the, the what we call the, I call the Dupe Run project, the, what do you call it? The uh, bar, bar screen. screens. Bar Proposed screen. bar I screens. Got to get that in my head. <laughs> aside from that expense of that project, every year, at the wastewater plant, we spend between three and four, five hundred thousand dollars in capital improvements to replace worn-out items. That's correct. Or pumps, generators, or whatever it might be. Uh, it seems to me that if we continue that level of funding, uh, hopefully that you can work out an asset management plan that would be commensurate with those dollars that are available, because we're not going to have a lot of money for the sewer system until we get rid of the bond debt and after 2025. All right. Now, for now, to, well, we talked to John already, and I don't know if you want to cover that, John, but the township already uh, sets aside 100000 for maintenance, 150 for sewer cleaning, which is part of the asset management. We already are doing part of it as we go because we are uh, televising and cleaning the sewers. That's part of the uh, evaluation and condition assessment. Uh, we also have $125,000 set aside for uh, treatment plant and other things. So we already have about, if you add them up, $375,000 allocated to do maintenance and uh, uh, analysis and assessment of the system. So we're going to present that in our answer to them. Okay, so my feeling is our goal should be to stay within those budget parameters 
because our water and sewer rates are high, en high enough, as we all know. It is. I, I will qualify my answer to that, so please put up with me because, like I said, we don't want to overcommit the township to spending more money. But at the end of the asset management plan, we're going to end up with a bona fide capital improvement plan based on the asset management that we talked about, based on the business uh, risk evaluation. That's going to identify what pipe is in what condition and when does it need to be repaired and how much money is going to cost. And this plan could be a five-year plan and a 20-year plan. And based on those parameters, we can come up with what the township should be spending in five years, what the township should be spending in 20 years, what items are going to be covered in the first five years, and what items can wait for 20 years to be spent. And based on that, you, can, you have to come up with what you call a rate structure to fund these projects. And that gets submitted to DEQ. They review it and approve it. And um, again, if you can't afford it. Well, we have a rate structure. So hopefully. Now, you do now based on the, what you have, you're working with. But, but what I'm saying is if we submit an asset management plan that gets approved, analyzed and approved by them, it coincides with the capital improvement plan that has its own rate structure. Well, since Duncan is here, uh, fire chief, uh, is it, we've been undertaking a so-called wa water, water reliability estimate. study. Yes, has to be done every 10 years. Uh, and you're, you're, you're going to make a presentation on that. In Hopefully in June, yes. June, at our June meeting. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about at that point um, how we can undertake um, a few million dollars more worth of water main replacements. And one of the big ones is on Meridian where we have both both sides of Parkway, but basically from Parkway to maybe Bellevue or so forth, and all the way north to um, Highland where we have all those water main breaks between church and ferry um, on Meridian, get rid of that main and upsize it. I think that was our plan um, and several others. So you might be interested in that. Um, and, all right, and now are there any more questions? John, you want to say something? Regarding the GIS system, I met with both Trent and Riverview this week, and they are very impressed with its uh, Aero 200 is the system they're using, and they love it. And for very inexpensive, we can get off the ground and get this going. Because as you see on the plan, we're supposed to have all the manholes done by 2019. We'll get them done. So uh, maybe not this year, but... <laughs> But uh, so you're, you're suggesting on the GIS that maybe at some point, uh, maybe prior to a meeting or something, we could do a, see a demonstration at your office. We might want to set that up. So. Or if you can, um, if you can get access through your Wi-Fi to our server, we can do it here. Display it on screen. We, we can do it. Dry run, try it, and see if it works. This way, you don't have to leave the meeting room. You'll see okay. it here. That might work, too. Let, let me try to uh, see if we can uh, work it out that way. Sure. All right. Uh, uh, now, are there any questions? Staff, any questions? All right. Well, thank you for thank you. your presentation. Next item on the agenda, the chairman's report. <clears throat> I have... Um, uh, well, two things. First one I want to cover, I just mentioned. Uh, this this summer, coming June and July, uh, we're going to have to deal with all these issues regarding the wastewater plant and the water system. What improvements do we want to undertake? We already have identified the bar screen project, which is over a million dollars, and uh, several million dollars worth of water main replacement that we need to undertake. Where uh, I think we've had the highest number of water main breaks this past winter. Uh, and, and in fact, I, I just want to say something. In the end of the year report so far, it shows that we purchased, we we're $65,000 above last year in our water purchase from Detroit, from Great Lakes Water Authority. So the, the wholesale water we bought, and our consumption has <coughs> gone a little bit down, just a percent or so, but that's water loss. So the water loss figure that is reflected in this report, and it's not final, it's just a monthly report, is $65,000. And how many water main breaks, 30, 40, we had this year? Last year, 65. 65. And we knew what part of the problem was the pressure. 
and we've got that under control now. But hopefully we will not have a repeat of that, especially when we get the Park Lane uh, project built. And maybe you should give us an update on the Park Lane project, what you know. We're waiting for a permit from the state. You got to come to the mic. You got to come to the mic. <coughs> this is the Park Lane water main from Bridge Road on Park Lane out to the North Point where it meets Meridian. Yeah, we already have a uh, Wayne County permit. The state should be issuing their permit anytime. They've been backlogged with different uh, projects. So there's one reviewer at the DEQ that's reviewing these plans, and we're hoping that we get her approval. One thing she's requiring that wasn't required before that because you do directional drilling and fusing the pipe, we were successfully able to uh, pre-chlorinate the pipe before we put it in the ground on West River Road and call it quit, flush it after that and we're done. Now she's requiring post-chlorination after the pipe is in the ground, she likes it to uh, be chlorinated again. We are fighting with them on that issue. I don't know if we'll be able to uh, be successful or not, but we're That's trying. That's the way we used to do it anyway. That's correct, but we didn't pre-chlorinate it at the time. So okay. we used to put it in and flush it. Then after you flush it, you chlorinate it, test it two times in 24 hours period. So we're hoping to uh, that she let us do whatever we did on West River Road to make the project much simpler, much easier to uh, accomplish in the field. Now we know West River Road went very smoothly, so we hope I think, uh, it will be the same. Were you successful in getting the county to waive their permits fees? I, I was, and I also was successful in letting them reduce the thickness of the asphalt from six inches to an inch and a half cap, which saves us quite a bit of money. So uh, they've been working with us. Uh, we've been putting some pressure on them, and we're getting some success. So they did waive the permit fees and inspection fees and so forth. That's a savings of a couple hundred thousand dollars. Well, between all together, yes, yes. The permit fees were $36,000 alone, so we were able to let them uh, waive it. Waive it, yes. Okay. Good. Any questions on that? So we're always waiting for somebody to approve something for you. Anyway, thank you, Sahel. <clears throat> the other item I want to mention in your packet near the end, um, I put a copy of a uh, out of the, a magazine <coughs> called The Week. I don't know if you're familiar with that magazine. It's like Time Magazine. It comes out once a week. Here was a full-page article on the recycling crisis. And um, I saw on the news that the city of Westland has cut out their recycling program entirely. And I've talked to people in the business that are familiar with what's going on. And I just want to quote a few things from this. It says, until recently, the U.S. and other developed countries sold much of their recyclables to China, which accepted more than 40% of the American waste paper, plastic, glass, and metal, and other reusable materials. China began importing trash in the late 1980s to feed its growing manufacturing sector. Chinese companies employed legions of people to sort the junk. It was then converted into cheap exports, such as shoes, bottles, hoses, and plastic toys. That all changed in January 2018. That's when China banned most imports of loathsome foreign recycled materials. So what's happening? Philadelphia went from making $65, I'm sorry, $67 a ton selling trash to having to pay $40 a ton in the mid 2018 to get rid of its recycling. So they went from making $67 to paying $40 a ton of recycled materials in Philadelphia. Other cities have responded by cutting back the kinds of materials to be recycled and, what, and, and sending more to the landfills. A couple of things that surprised me. Many waste management companies don't want America's recycling because it's too dirty. It's estimated that 25% of American recyclables are contaminated with food waste. Um, the one thing I was surprised about someplace here, oh, it says... Uh, other stuff that is theoretically recyclable is too dirty to be useful. Pizza boxes, which I always recycle, for example, can't be recycled because the grease can't be separated from the cardboard fibers. If recyclables don't wash the, if recyclers don't wash the food and residue out of their used cans and plastic bottles, they're also useless. The expense of recycling this tainted garbage makes it cheaper for many companies to simply buy new materials than, than use recyclables. 
So the article goes on to talk about what are some of the solutions, and one of them is to reduce what people actually can recycle, reduce it to certain plastics that might be marked. I know a lot of these flimsy things that come like strawberries, and you can crush them, you know. I don't think there's any recycling value to those, but they are marked with a recyclable thing. And um, pizza boxes and other things. So I notice, I try to be a little careful, but I notice looking at other people's, you know, I can't help but peek at it. Um, some people will put their recyclables in a plastic bag in the container. Well, plastic bags aren't recyclable. So anyway, it's a, it's a growing problem. And when we negotiate our wastewater contract in a year and a half, two years? No, it expires in November this year. Right. We extended it because of the bridge. <clears throat> I think that includes. No, the but that wasn't what we extended. What what we're doing with the recyclables that at that extra cost is up in November. Right. That's that oh. expires in November. Well, then we, I just it reminded me that I thought that we had negotiated the whole thing for two years. Well, kind of two things because that uh, right. the recyclables came up after, I believe. Okay. Well. Yeah. Whatever. So anyway, uh, something yeah. to look at, and I know one thing personally. I probably get in trouble for saying this. I don't want to encourage any more. I don't want to incur any more funding problems for picking up our refuse. I guess if we have to, if we have to join the core of other people and change our recycling program and limit it a little bit, we might have to do that. I mean, that's just a thought. Another possible thought is reduce what is allowed to be recycled and maybe pick it up once every two weeks. Well, and I think part of the problem is that you know some people don't like the pizza boxes uh, or glass uh, you know it's not all glass there's certain glasses that can't be recycled or that they won't take and you do see where people oh it's glass boom I'll throw it in I'll throw right. it in. In other communities like um, over in Rockwood waste management is over there as well they pick up the recycling every other week over there and they and they use the really big containers the 96 gallon over there so I mean that's another thing because I know Grozeal recycles a lot so maybe we need to go to bigger containers and just do it every other week. Quite a jump from the little blue, it will be. blue things yeah, to a definitely. 96. I mean, but uh, uh, they still have to be putting the right stuff in because as Correct. waste management to told us, like what, 75% of our recycle ends up in the dump. Up in the dump. And uh, when it ends up in the dump, the more we put in the dump, the cheaper it gets for us. So, you know, on well, that might as that, well. Yeah. 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 No, it's cheaper yeah. for us, and I agree with Jim. I wouldn't want these big containers. It might be cheaper for us to have an education program and limit what we're going to allow people to recycle and do it every other week, and that's the way it's going to be. And everybody that's. I mean, it's certainly something we have to look at because, uh, like the Westland, uh, I read that article too, and they're. They went from paying twenty-eight dollars a ton to eighty dollars a right, ton. I right. mean, that's a huge. Uh, and that's what's happening with this recycling. Uh, it's uh, it's just really shooting up in costs. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to take a look at that. Okay, and my final comments are for the commission and the, any public that's watching. Uh, come June or July, one of those agendas, we're going to have a big discussion on. Uh, future capital improvements and uh, how we're going to pay for them and this, this involves our sewer system and our water system and, um, and and it'll all be without a rate increase for water that's for sure so we're, we bypassed any rate increase for water this year so that should be good news for everybody um, with that I, the chairman's done so we'll go around the table Mr. Budney uh, thank you. I just have uh, one thing, and it goes with uh, yeah, after listening to tonight. If you have any questions, uh, 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 Mr. Melvesto and I have been doing a question and answer session for the last couple of months. It's been uh, seems to have gone over well. We've gotten over 20 people at each meeting, which is huge for Grozeal. Uh, so I, I invite you to come. It's April 24th this month in the boardroom at six o'clock. That's all I have. Oh, and that's going to be posted on the. It's 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 it'll we put we do a push on GI Connect. It's on the uh, website uh, and it's very informal. It's six o'clock. 
Yeah, and it's very informal. We just sit around and everybody gets to ask their questions. We're we're merely there to give you answers. We have there's no set agenda, there's no topic we're talking about. If you have no questions, the meeting's over. <laughs> I have a question, Jim. Has anybody talked about roads? Uh we did the the first the first meeting that came up. And of course everybody wants the roads fixed and you go, well, then quit turning it out the middle. <laughs> okay, Brenda. I have nothing. John? Yeah, nothing further at this time. Phil. Uh, two items. One, uh, were there minutes from the last meeting? They're in the making, Phil. They're coming. Oh, okay. Hopefully I just, I, I didn't know. I knew there was a meeting and I, <laughs> I wasn't there. Uh, I, I have a comment on roads. Um, we were gone for one month and we went traveled through 14 states and concerning the roads Michigan's are by far the worst and our gas prices are already the highest and I hear these proposals from the the uh, governor that they're looking at this 45 cent per gallon tax which is just a number in the air but yet there's no real plan. I don't think they've done a road assessment study anywhere near what we've done here on Gross Eel. My guess is that the real problem with our roads is probably double what they're thinking it is. And uh, I think it's very concerning. And, and it, it got me thinking that here on our affluent island, one of the higher... Uh, income and, and standard of living uh, communities in the state, we couldn't get a millage pass to fix our roads. And I think that it's, it's really time to take notice because, uh, like I say, 14 different states and, and our roads were absolutely the worst. And um, I, I'm just not sure where it's going to go. That, that's just my comment. Well, it's always timely to talk about it. So. <laughs> a lot, based on what you've said, and it's a clear observation, if you head to Toledo, you'd know right away when you hit the state line. So it appears to me, having driven I-75 downtown for quite a few years, there's certain areas that always fatigue and break up. A couple of years after they're paved, they fatigue and break up again. We hear these explanations um, that claim that it's the heavy truck traffic and people in the industry with national responsibility out of this state tell me on the interstates the trucks should be weighing the same when they're in Toledo or when they're up here. So it seems to me we might be hiding one of the realities which is looks like the cake wasn't baked right, and that's why the roads fatigue. And what that means is the engineering specifications probably aren't where they are in some other places, or the foundation isn't, or something's not working right here because it does work other places. Now, if that's the case, and it would be very difficult for an administration at the statewide level to admit that. But if that's the case, then they'd have to admit, oops, we made a mistake, now we have to correct it. If that's the reason, the probability of that happening is less than 5 or 10 percent. But there's a reason that nobody's grasped yet. We hear all these explanations. The heavy trucks, national management people don't believe that at all here. They say that's no way the answer. And right around Clark Street, where I-75 bends, if you drove that a lot over the years, about two years, and Jim Budney did, and some of you other people did too, about two years after a repaving, it would fragment and be broken up again. And one morning I was driving down, there were 10 or 12 cars with blowing tires off to the side of the road because the potholes were so bad right there. Unbelievable. So there's another reason 
they, either they haven't found it or it hasn't been revealed yet. But I think it's time maybe to bring that reason out of the closet. So if somebody like Ohio has an idea from an engineering standpoint, that's an answer. We've heard from Les Schmidtke about chip sealing on Route 72. And so that works. That climate is much more severe there, colder, longer, more snow than down here. If they can chip seal 72, then maybe in a small way, Gross Seal needs to look at more chip sealing down here. And it's worked great in some areas. Now that's a totally separate and distinct thing. I'm not blending the two. They're two separate concepts. But there's something to matter with the way the paving is done in the state of Michigan and it's not the heavy trucks. Enough said there. Good point. And I just want to add to that, my observation, maybe Les would speak to this, you get north of Midland, the highways are better, the major roads are all better than they are in the, down, down south here, and particularly in the seven county region metro area. Um, and we have a lot of concrete down here. It's curious to me that when you go to Toledo, um, into Ohio, they rebuilt that freeway almost 30 miles from Toledo to Finley, I guess. It's asphalt, not concrete. Mm -hmm. And um, I, think you, make, I think you make a good point, John. And uh, the section of 94, when you hit the limits and come up to, towards Gibraltar, that's a mess, even though they keep repairing it. It's all concrete, all put in. Each lane is rides different. Uh, so you're right. Okay. So Phil, thanks for bringing this up. Any other comments on this? As we know, we're helpless to do anything at this point. Uh, and to the chief, I should have mentioned our road program that we lost again on didn't involve neighborhood streets. It was all primary roads, like ferry like Meridian, like Parkway, like East River and West River, um, Bellevue and so forth, but not the neighborhood streets, so. And Church Road, and Church Road, right. Uh, Les, you've been very quiet. Do you have any sign issues? Yes, I have a couple of things. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that there's somebody here to back me up. Uh, this past weekend, come to find out that there repaving 72 from Grayling to County Line. And the only thing that's wrong with 72 is when you get past 93, heading west, yeah, west and eastbound, there's a trench across the road, and that's caused from the snowmobiles that got spikes on them. Right, Duncan? About takes your eye teeth out when you hit that. But otherwise than that, 72 from Grayling, to Kalkaska, where they slip sealed, or I'm sorry, chip sealed, they're, they're redoing that whole road. And it's just like this countertop right here. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't know where they're getting all their money. And when I heard that, I said, well, my God, how many times are they going to pave this road? They just chip sealed it. Well, they chip sealed 72 from Kalkaska County line all the way to Kalkaska. But now they're doing, they're repaving the whole road from the city of Grayling to Kalkaska County line. And they got uh, up there across the road from Shell Haven, the canoe place, they got all kinds of big heavy equipment sitting in there. We're going, now what are they doing? That, tie, that ties into the north, the point that some of the northern counties have a bigger portion of the formula they're gonna, they're than gonna, they should have. They're going to spend it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyhow, the other thing I have is, uh, how is uh, our sewer cleaning and project going? Any snafus? Do you have anything else before I <laughs> take over? <laughs> no, that's about it. Right. I was going to address that next, Les. So if you had anything else. Uh, let me see. Nope. Okay, so now we'll go to staff. Uh, John? Regarding the uh, segment two, the cleaning televising program, I'd just like to remind all the residents that everyone is receiving this letter from our company, Safeway Transport. It has some very important recommendations on there that you need to follow so you don't have any odor or water issues in your house. 
We've had a couple recently this week. So be sure you look at that letter and follow those instructions. Uh, currently, they're working from Bridge Road southbound, and they'll be working between Thoroughfare Canal and West River Road coming south for this segment of the project. Um, so far, this segment, Les, we've found uh, four breaks in the line on Meridian Road at the very north end. We had made four point repairs. I have pictures I'll show you in a minute. And then we had two point repairs made on Church Road at Park Lane. And we also, uh, on what we would call Newtson Court, the little court right there off of Newtson, we did 160 feet of 8-inch replacement. So I had reviewed it, and we decided the best thing to do was just go ahead and get it done. So we accomplished that this week. And here's some of the uh, pictures from what we have found. This is on the very north end of Meridian. There's a big gouge. It looks like either a, a trencher <coughs> or a backhoe put a big hole in the pipe. So oh, the the black area in the photo is the is the pipe that's missing. Oh yeah, well th this is the missing pipe right here. See it all the way around. So there was a hole directly through the pipe there. What type of pipe was that? Truss. Ten Arm, inch, Arm truss. Inch truss. Yes. Here is definitely a trencher. There was a gas line and a underground power line right directly on top of this pipe. And so the trencher had trenched right through the pipe for about 15 feet of the pipe. So we ended up cutting the pipe out and putting a new pipe there. This is another one that's most likely a gas installation, trenched right through the pipe for about 10 feet. All these were in about a 500 foot radius of each other. Now these at are all on Meridian up, Meridian up near Park Lane the point. at the Correct. north end of the island. Okay. North of Bridge Road. Yes. Correct. Yes. How about if I narrow down the latest sub that was installed up there? This one, someone had marked the manholes that were on undeveloped lots. And if you look real close, you can see that's a 4x4 four four post driven directly through the pipe. So when they marked the manhole, they drove it right through the pipe. There was two of those. This one is at Church and Park Lane. Uh, they tried to televise it. Well, they tried to clean it first, and then they televised up to it. You can see the pipe has collapsed. That's half of the top of the pipe laying in the flow line itself. This is another one right across the street from there on Church Road. The top of the pipe is gone. So we've made all those repairs, and we're moving forward. Like I said, they finished up Waterview today. They're going to do... Uh, Park Lane to the Thoroughfare Canal Bridge, and then coming south from there, beginning the rest of the week. John, the one up at Park Lane and Meridian, you told me that you estimated that it was taking on the one one broken area was taking on 25 gallons a minute. Correct. Yes, and there was four of those, so figured that's about 100 gallons a minute for all day, which is 1,440 minutes, adds up to 144,000 gallons of water per day that we were treating. They're going to the sewage plant. And that depends on you know the the saturation of the ground and how, what the groundwater level is. But in terms of by our, looking at it, you could estimate it about that. If we hit enough of those, we may impact the hope flow we through the sewage anymore. plant. <laughs> well, I hope we find some because our uh, we have that issue with um, how much water we sell every day and how much we're treating almost double the amount that we sell every day uh, at the at the wastewater plant. We know there's a lot of infiltration and seepage into the pipes, but these bigger ones, if you can catch them, it's going to help, especially during storm events. So when they had started this program, speaking of the infiltration, when we had that inch and a half of rain two Saturdays ago, there was so much footing drain water in the pipe, they could not even televise because the camera was underwater. So, yes, we have a lot of infiltration. Nice crystal clear water. Yes, sir. And we have come across a couple sump pumps we've found tied in. I've made contact with the residents, asked them to address that situation and get it taken care of. So as we see them, I'm trying to make contact with each of those customers and having them take care of their issues. So far you've had cooperation. Cooperate, yeah. And then so as we find these point repairs, we talk with Sahil, we're just going to go ahead and get these repairs done. We've budgeted the money to make these repairs. Let's just get them done and keep moving forward. 
especially now with this. Sure. Help us on our asset so management they've plan. They've all too. been pretty small at this point. Yes, yes. How the biggest you know? one was the 160 feet of pipe. The other ones were, you know, a day job, and they were like $2,700 each repair. How deep have some of these been? Uh, the deepest so far was 12 feet. Hi, right, John. Good report. Thank you. And oops, I had a few other things for you. Um, the West River water main replacement uh, project from last year, the crew is on scene uh, doing the restoration. So if anybody has any sprinkler issues or anything else that needs to be resolved, contact the office and we'll get it taken care of. Um, spring flushing of the fire hydrants will begin the week of uh, April 15th. So we'll put out push notifications. Everybody try and not do your laundry during that time during the day between 9 and 3. And uh, sign up for Grow Deal Connect so you know when we're in your area. Uh, the Park Lane Water Main Project, the contractor's on board. He's ready to start the last week of April depending on the permit process. And then also I'll be out of the office from 413 to 420. If you need anything, get a hold of George Marks. Thank you. Well, well, you just said that Grozeal Hill Connect yes, sir. is really, really handy. Because this past weekend, we're sitting at the table at the cabin, and Lance says, got a main break. I says, why are you telling me? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Call somebody who cares. <laughs> Okay, Lorinda, anything? Uh, I'm done. <laughs> and Jim Nelson, you're here. You're More a trustee. Question. Thanks for being here. Mesa Bridge, they trimmed the trees about a week ago that were in the way and stuff. Any idea when that replacement is going to begin? It's supposed to be this spring. Frankly, I, this commission has not been involved in that at all. Uh, is there something, is there anybody that can address that issue? I mean, it's... Not on our agenda, but, and I don't even know what they're going to do. <laughs> they trimmed the trees, so I guess it's done, right? Well, Mesa Island was uh, put on, uh, I wish I was six foot. Uh, Mesa Island is on their critical list, and that's up for replacement uh, this, right now. It's, it's supposed to start pretty soon. Um, Big Bridge is going to work on the piers. Uh, they're not going to do anything with the West River Road Parkway Bridge until they, they start the repairs of the big bridge. And when they go to do that bridge, they're looking upwards of, they're, they're telling us anywhere upwards of 90 days that county bridge will be shut down when they do the West River Road Project, or West River Project. So 2000, right 20, now, 2020. Uh, but right now, the, the one for this year, the two for this year is the Piers and Mesa Island. And then they're scheduled out the rest of the bridges up through 2023. So along with the other 120-some bridges within the county that have to be either replaced, repaired, or whatever might have to happen. But we, there, is a, there is a schedule. How, how true they'll stay to it is a wait and see. Well, I think, uh, I think I've uh, put together two and two. And you as fire chief, you're really uh, the one pushing communications with the county on this bridge stuff. Yeah, um, uh, Supervisor Loftus and I, and I know Mr. Bundy's been involved quite a few times, but I'm pushing like a, a madman with the county to try and get these bridges repaired. Uh, the West River Road Bridge over the Parkway, the Parkway Bridge, is critical for us. Uh, we're, we're like locked in on West River Road from Parkway to Ferry Road. It's one way in on any type of structure fire going in there. Going in there, Park Lane's another problem. A Park Lane bridge with those, those multi-million dollar mansions. Some of them I got to come in the, the 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 far side of it, and I can bring I can only bring in two trucks one way. If you know anything about the fire service, fire chiefs like to bring fire trucks in from multiple directions. So, but that's tied us up a little bit. So, and then the ferry road bridge is, is up for uh, repair. Uh, that's up that's towards the end of 2023 so but there is there is there are plans moving forward the county's working hard to try and get us taken care of how, how far off was the park lane bridge on the schedule did you 
The, the, the piers are supposed to be this summer, if I'm not mistaken. Park Lane Bridge. No, Park Lane. Lane. Park, Park, Lane. Lane. Park Lane Bridge. That's, that's 2023. 222, okay. 223. That's yeah. part of a bundling project. They're going to bundle yeah. 40 bridges and build it more than one shot, so that's part of Okay. We've, we've asked for, I've asked numerous times for the engineering on these bridges that they've shut down. If you've read the paper, the, the guy in the county that was doing the inspections, that's all a... That's all blown up, and then to try and find any engineering on these bridges over the last so many years, they're gone. So, so we're, we're, we're virtually starting from scratch. Well, on the Meso Island Bridge, what are they planning on doing there? This summer. Are they, no, are they relocating it? No. They're going to they're replacing it, it where, it's, where it sits Where's now. Where's that now? Because when they replaced that bridge many years ago, they moved it to the west. And what they did when they built that bridge, they built it right over the water main. And Kenny Fisher and Gary Fisher and myself are the ones that found this leak coming up when the wind blew all the water out. And we, we why well, is water coming up there? So we shut the water off. Sure enough, that was a water main break, and it was right underneath the bridge because they moved it over this way. So that's when we put all new water main in, and I'm just saying... Are they going to relocate it again or are they going to leave it there? They're going to leave it there. It's going to be a one-lane operation. We Half of the got time a, they're going to rebuild? What's, I'm sorry. Half of the time they're going Half to rebuild? Half of the time. And then we have some emergency plans in place in case that bridge goes down prior to. So it, when, when I say it's critical, it is critical. So you take a fire truck over that, tr you can actually see that bridge move. So. What about Hickory? That's private. Now, from what I understand with the three groups that are involved in that bridge, they're, they're planning on some type of repair or replacement. So that's all I've heard about that bridge. Yeah, it's private. It's a privately held bridge. Yeah. And that's, a, that's an extremely tight bridge for us, too, because these new fire trucks are they're, they're 10 feet wide. So they're big, they're big pieces of equipment. So, but we work, are working on the bridges. We're moving forward. Thanks for all your coordination on that. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay. Anybody else wish to speak to anything? If not, we'll call for a motion to adjourn. I would adjourn. like to make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. I would like to support that. All in favor, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for watching. Bye.